Tarasi show. We got a good one for you folks. We got a good one. The number one team, South Carolina, undefeated. I mean, it's all on the line for them, but playing against Iowa, who's got the one, the National Player of the Year, Caitlin Clark, a player that um, we were talking about this earlier, right? What were we saying? Sometimes you just need that one player, and Iowa has one in Caitlin Clark. I mean, this is a defining moment for her, playing against the best team in the country that hasn't lost a game on the biggest stage. And uh, she's been able to do it every single round. And just when you think, okay, that's the last game she has 30, 10, and 10, she comes back and does it again. And she's going to need that tonight and maybe a little bit more. The one thing that I think if I'm Iowa that scares me the most, a lot of things scare me about South Carolina. Obviously, their ability to rebound, basically dominate the paint. What scares me is they have multiple people who can guard a player like Clay Caitlin. And, and Size, the, speed. And they're going to throw multiple bodies at her, right? She's not going to get a steady diet of just one person. Um, but, you know, if they're on and with the amount of shooters that Iowa has, that always creates a problem. And that's always the offset, right? You know, threes are worth more than two. So. <laughs> Indeed they are. Yes, that's they are. That, that UConn math coming out yes, again. Yes, they are. No, I mean, my take on it is this. The thing about South Carolina is they find ways to win. That's what makes them tough. No matter what those ways are, they find them. But it's almost no matter who they play, the amount of scoring they do doesn't change much. It's just how much the other team scores. They're usually in the 60s, 70s, whereas Iowa, if they get hot, they can put up 90. Well, I mean, that's, this is probably the best offensive team. But they have to get hot. Which... Well, they have to get hot, but they're going to get the looks because they're going to take them. Like, that's for sure. And, you know, uh, on the flip side, South Carolina is not going to shoot you at the gym. So you're going to have opportunities to run and space the floor against them. And this is what they're going to do. I mean, they're going to pack the Look paint. Them packing them in. And they're going to play that good old five blue and not guard <laughs> the ball. Nor would I guard the ball either. I mean, that is packed. But I think it, when you get to this moment and you're the team like Iowa that's going against, you know, for lack of a better Goliath, you got to do something different. You've got to try something different. You're not going to win playing straight up man-to-man. -man. Well, yeah, if you're going to match up toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you're going to probably lose, especially to this team that, like you said, just finds a way to win. Yeah, they do. They, they, they find a way to win. They've done it. Win. You know, they did it last year, and this year they're, they're following the same blueprint. Mm -hmm. Man, they're big. They really are big. Caitlin's going to have to do a lot of her damages really one-on-one -on -one and going away from the defense because if she tries to find space where, you know, their bigs are, she's going to have a, a tough time finishing. But if she can do that early, that's a bad sign for South Carolina because getting to the basket just opens up everything when you can shoot. Well, I was literally just going to ask you that. <laughs> I was literally just going to ask you, like, as a shooter, as somebody who, when you catch the ball, everybody Im immediately feels threatened. What is your, like, how do you navigate driving? Because I feel like you want to shoot threes, not yeah. in a bad way. Like, you're looking to shoot threes. Like, why not? So how do you, how do you like, navigate or negotiate driving, I mean, making, make, making the defense stay honest in that I, way? I think the more you can touch the paint, the more effective you are. Because you're always going to get those opportunities to shoot the three. But if you can, like she did in that play, which is going to open up Warnock on the, on the weak side and Cezano for, for little dump downs. Um, and if she settles for a lot of threes, which I've done in the final four, and they didn't go in, <laughs> you will struggle. They're and sexy. then you can't find yourself. You, you want to shoot them. And, and to be honest, so Cezanne, much taller in person. Much bigger. Much taller in person. I was like, oh, dang. And you know, the one thing that makes her tough to guard, I think you mentioned this, she's dribbled once in her whole life. So if she can get position, she's going to be effective no matter what. Yeah. All right, so we're having a good conversation here about effectiveness of these players. Who better to bring in than the ones that have to guard them? We're going to have Paige and AZ join us. We're getting connected now with Paige Beckers and AZ Fudd, brought to you by AT&T. Let's see what these young bucks have to say. What's up, girls? Hello. What's up? Is that what they say? Girls? <laughs> Welcome wait, to the show. Wait, we have Wi-Fi in stores now? <laughs> Boy, things have changed. Are you on the locker? Things What's have changed. What are you guys watching film? No, we're in the kitchen. Let us know. We do yeah, a scout report cooking. with CD? You said nah, you're in the CD. kitchen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, we didn't have a kitchen when we were there. No, we had. Wow. Where do we eat? South? Do they still have uh, the South Hall? Mm -hmm. They still have the dining halls. <laughs> They're like, yeah, they have dining halls. <laughs> so what's going we, on YouTube? We don't eat there, but. <laughs> you two have had such an interesting year, you know, from injuries and like expectations. And, you know, we've been in that position where we've obviously been in Connecticut for a long time. And, you know, that pressure is just suffocating. How do you guys navigate those waters, especially now with the limelight always being on you guys? Uh, it's definitely difficult. Obviously, my college career hasn't gone how I thought it would, just with injuries and all the adversity that I've had to face. But it makes you like never take the game because you were pressure and to play under these bright lights and the hard circumstances. So, well, I think you guys need to go to Ted's a little bit more. That usually... <laughs> They're probably like, what's Ted? <laughs> oh, no, they know. That usually cures no, all my injuries really quickly. <laughs> You're down with Ted's? Yeah. All right. Kaylin's kind of doing her thing right now, so let's, let's uh, tap into the game real fast. You guys have played against her, I'm sure, even as probably like an AAU, in college you played against her. Like, talk about what it's like to guard her to play against her. It's tough to guard someone like Kate who can score at every level, but I mean, the way that she pulls it, coming across half court, she, her confidence is something that's hard to guard. And she was like that. Like, both of us played her in AAU in high school. Um, she was like that then, too. Which is, it's crazy with me. I've only gotten better. It's just been day one, that confidence? Yeah, I mean, we played each other like all I would track from Minnesota, so there was like a lot of Midwest battles, and she's been the same in that regard. Yeah, you know, she has that like small town swag, right? Like she knows she owns the state of Iowa and the whole school. Like she knows it's all on her. And yeah. that makes you play at a different level sometimes. And especially she's taken, you know, that underdog mentality, not only with, you know, University of Iowa, but just kind of in her career. Um, so what are you guys doing these days? Let us know. They're trying to take our jobs. They have their own little, little podcast <laughs> thing happening. They're trying to take our jobs. Let us know. Yeah, what's up with that? What's going on? I mean, the that season ended a lot. Oh, that the show is kind of reduced to that, but the season ended a lot earlier than we all wanted, so we've had a lot more free time than we've ever had. So I guess we can play with that. Man, I gotta say, the crowd is going absolutely bananas here <laughs> because Caitlin is doing Caitlin things. It's hard to hear you guys, but it sounds like you're having fun on your show. Sounds like because the season ended earlier than you thought. You have a little yes. more time. Yeah. All right. Yes. Unfor That's tough. Unfortunately, you guys get a spring break. Yeah. But has it been spring break yet? Yeah, we missed that. <laughs> it was a couple weeks ago. Oh. You know, oh, I was. I mean, when I tell you these Iowa fans travel, this is what it was like in Seattle. I cannot hear a thing. This is pretty epic in this building. But we're going to break now. You guys stay with us. Hopefully that audio will get a little better. See you on the other side. <laughs> Oh, you still can't see her. You still can't see her. Uh, we're back in the building, the Bird and Tarazi show. We have our guests, AZ Fudd and Paige Beckers. Y'all, I'm not even gonna lie, we couldn't hear a word you were saying. So let's try to get some questions in quick before Caitlin starts hitting threes again. Tell us what your plans are for the summer. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna be here, we'll be here for summer session and I really don't know what my plans are. We have the European tour in August oh, yeah. with the team. So we're going to oh, Croatia, we Italy. Croatia, where Nika's from, and then Italy, where Coach is from, and then what's the third Slovenia. One? Jealous. Okay. We didn't get a college tour in my four years. You didn't get a college tour? No, it was during 9 11, so we didn't, we didn't oh, get to go anywhere. We got one. Yeah, where'd you guys go? Italy, we too? We went to, yeah, where Coach is from. All right. Yeah, we went to Italy. Well, I feel like uh, if it's up to. If it's up to coach, it's always going to be Italy. Gonna be Italy. <laughs> we went to hey, Italy, coach, where you want to go? Italy. And we were in, like, Switzerland for a day. Oh, in Belgium. We went to Belgium, too. That's cool. Did you go yeah. to Antwerp? Yeah. 
Get out. <laughs> I can't you don't hear know you right geography. Now. <laughs> Ge you don't know geography. I went to, we went to Brussels. We had some waffles. Not bad. Hey, yeah. so if you guys were playing Iowa right now, what would you do to Caitlin Clark? Like, do you guys have like a special trick to guard her? Like, you know, she dribbles twice with her right hand, and I don't know, if you poke her in the shoulder, she'll fall down. Man, they're just giving her uh, right-handed layups. Like, she always steps back to her left. She always steps back to her left, so I would like sit on it and make her go right. And also, I feel like when teams play her, they let her pass and score. So I'm thinking they won. Either she gets 50 and has zero assists, or she has 10 points and 30 assists. So you gotta I make like her do one. You gotta make her um, always sit on her and make her go right. I like that. Yeah, it's so funny. You, you it's do? so funny you say that because then know you know people play against Paige and, and AZ and they both have 35. And you're like, well, you should have <laughs> took one away. You know, it's like <laughs> I would literally the minute she starts dribbling, run a, thir a second defender at her. I would pick her up 94 feet and I would mess with her, her so her bad. At I would court. poke <laughs> at her, I would jab at her, I would frustrate her, I would do dumb stuff. I would get a technical. I would get a flagrant. Like <laughs> you gotta disrupt the rhythm of the game. That's the when people do that to me. Good old Elena Beard. Shout out, best defender ever. <laughs> like when he she finally would, said when it. she would do that, he finally I'm like, said oh, it. Lena's got she me off my game. Ah, Lena as the what are you gonna defender. do? It's the true serum. You it's the true serum. Said it. <laughs> All right, you two. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Hope you have a good summers. Enjoy that. Enjoy that European tour. Huskies for life. Thanks for having us. Man, this game is going to be interesting. Do you think Caitlin can keep it up? I'm like, she had a 40-point triple-double. Well, she can, she can keep it up, but I think South Carolina is just settling in just a yeah. little bit, which, like you said, they the ground and pound down. will wear you down. The thing about them is they're never too high, they're never too low, they're that team. They really, they really never they get rattled. Go. Kid's good. I mean, good. look, the combination, the combination of shooting, shooting off the dribble, and being look able how to they're pass. Boston. I know. <laughs> this is too, so that right there, what they're doing to Boston, that's what I'm doing to Caitlin Clark. Absolutely. 94 feet. I'm running from different places. This is. I'm running a defender. Right I'm, here. A second defender. Right here. This is where they get if lost. If they hit this, it's going to be trouble. You know, that's Dawn, though. Yeah. Dawn Come doesn't on. get rattled either. Somebody made a shot. What? Yeah. Bring the ball up. That's how she was with USA basketball. You know? Like, Remember we played Belgium? Same demeanor. World Cup. She was like, we're good. Well, if, if South Carolina. Oh, wow. And we said this earlier. Depending on how they call the game is really going to dictate a lot. Yeah. You know, if they let things go, South Carolina's got a big edge. Um, but I was making it work. Yeah. Well, I think we have a ball game in this one. Definitely. I mean, what a frustrating year for, for Paige and, and AZ, you know, like such great promise. Two of the most, I think, complimentary dynamic guards. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this all the time when you have two really good guards. If they can, if they don't take each other's space on the court, they work really well together. I think that's why we always played really well. We just played on different yeah. quadrants of the court, and they do that so well. And if they can get healthy, I mean, there's no reason why they're not going to be in this game next year. Yeah. I mean, definitely. It's, it's you haven't seen Paige playing so long. I know you, you forget. forget how. Great I think a lot of people is. have forgotten. You forget how great she was I think a lot of people in that year and a half, two years. I'm sure she knows people have forgotten. And AZ the same. Every time she gets in a rhythm of like Something really playing happened. well, she's had that bad luck, misfortune of you know getting an injury. But you know when you that's play, that's how they win this game. Yeah, Sorry. absolutely. That's how South Carolina is going to win this game. And I was going to say, if you play enough basketball, you're going to get hurt. <laughs> like, it's wise words, D. I mean. <laughs> How are you feeling? I feel great. I feel like a young bull. So what, what season is this for you? This is going to be 19. 19? Yeah. And wow. I feel really good about it. It's um, crazy. It happens fast. You know, you huh? always, when you play that many years, there's always years that you look back on. And that year kind of propels you for like the next whatever year or two summers of like 
really good basketball. For whatever reason, I think last summer was just eye-opening in a lot of ways for me. Um, yeah. And I think that's, I don't know what that like looks like. Refocus. It's a refresh, okay. reset, propel. I love, that for you. I love that for you. To being a young bull again. Sorry, working with Susan. Working with Susan. The blueprint is real. The athlete blueprint is real. And none of my pants fit. <laughs> Too small, too big. <laughs> too small, are you kidding you're me? You're losing weight? Oh no, no, you're gaining weight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing. It's, it is a good thing. That's a good thing. Well, Caitlin is making scoring points look really easy against anyone and anything right now. Yeah. It's really, I mean, it's hard to, oh, they're giving her a rest. A little breather with nine seconds. Oh, I like yeah. that coach. <laughs> Just look down at the clock. I like that coach. Get her out. Yeah. We'll get the media timeout, get her back in. To be honest, what people don't understand is those breaks. I mean, of course, on the back of a timeout or on the front end of a timeout, it's going to give her a longer rest. Even nine seconds is a break you need. It's huge. And speaking of breaks, we need a break. So we'll be back in a minute. I mean, if they keep shooting like this, we got a good one for you. The Bird and Tarasi Show is presented by AT&T. We believe connecting changes everything. Welcome back to the show. I mean, this has been the matchup I think everybody's wanted to see all year, to be honest. The two players that have been vying for that National Player of the Year award. And Kaylin Clark right now is responsible for 19 of her team's 22 points. Well, I mean, this is what she has to do, right? They're going to put two on the ball, and she's got to find the open man. But her vision, we were just talking about it. There's nothing better in the game than making the right pass to make your teammate look really, really good. And, you know, to be honest, I like how she's attacking the basket. She can easily settle for threes, which I'm sure she'll get to, as we see there. But attacking the basketball is just going to open up a, a lot for her going going down the stretch in the game. Because South Carolina is going to eventually settle into some rhythm defensively and, and make things a little bit harder for her. I know, not to beat a dead horse, but this is what I mean when I say the NCAA tournament is a guards game. And it's not negative to post players. What I was doing is just completely trying to take Aaliyah Boston out of the game. And they're able to do that because she just doesn't have the ball. So they're able to put two people on her. And if her teammates can't get her the ball, how's she supposed to score? But when you're a guard, you just have it. You just have it. Now, it's not that you can't get double teamed as a guard, which as I said, that's what I would do. I'd run somebody at Kaylin before a, a pick and roll ever came. Do the boo defense, as we like to call it in Seattle. It's inside joke. But, I, but that's the difference right now between guards and post players. The boo yeah. You've seen the boo defense. It's when I come out of nowhere and I oh, go, Oh, I hate the boo defense. Yeah, you're like a, a, a free safety in the middle of the free throw. <laughs> Literally. Line, like, go guard the corner guy, Sue. Get nope. out of the way. Nope. Boo. There she is. But you see what I'm saying? It's like, Absolutely. look, Caitlin has the ball. I don't think, I don't even remember Aaliyah touching it. Zaya Cook needs to have a big game. She needs to... Um, She's usually the it's one that takes the reins, right? That's true, yeah. When, when they start playing this pack-and-play defense that, mm -hmm. you know, to open it up. She's but, the one with the ability. I, I mean, how you, you can't even look at Caitlin. And, you know, Caitlin, it's, you know, she, on defense, she kind of just gets to chew. in the boot. Right? Right? Like, <laughs> and then she's there for the carom, and then they, here she goes. This is when she's at her, her this best is where, right here. And this is when the defense is most vulnerable. Don't help. I do like how Iowa's built. They've got Caitlin Clark and then a bunch of three-point shooters around her. And then Susano on the inside. Oh, here goes Zaya. This is when she usually kind of, uh, I feel like the second quarter's always her, you know what, let me feel it out, and then let me get mine. She's got 11 already. That's crazy. It's a quiet 11. But that's what's gonna be. She's the guard who's gonna be able to score. Well, and to be honest, they really haven't played a post player that's going to be able to score like this. I mean, we haven't seen a post player in Iowa since Megan Gustafson. <laughs> oh, shout out. Able to score the ball at will on the inside. And it makes a big difference when you're not. At the same time, no one's really going at the South Carolina post players in the last three months. It's probably not a matchup you're going to win. No. Iowa feels confident that they can. I love Zy Cook. I think she's going to do well in the WNBA. I think she has a place. Yeah. I definitely do. I don't know what her, like, COVID year, you know, staying or going situation is, but um, 
Boy, that's really made it hard for GMs, right. hasn't it? Yeah. In the WNBA draft. Possible. Knowing if someone's coming out, not coming out. I mean, it changes your draft board overnight. It's funny because it probably doesn't impact the first four picks as much. It's like you probably have your depth chart of like one, two, three, four, but it's gonna. Imp it's like probably really difficult for five, six, seven, eight, nine because you right. have no idea. I mean, offensive rebounding, finishing. This is gonna That's be right. South Carolina's bread and butter, right? And then it just slows the day, get the game down. That's what they need to do. No, I'm kind of jamming here. There we are. L, you're on TV. Shooting one. <laughs> She's had a long day. <laughs> Where's your Yeti? Three point play. Get your Yeti. The other thing about Caitlin, I mean, I know this is like, she's a really good ball handler. She's a great ball handler, yeah. And then we got Cardoza's in the game. That's usually the difference maker for South Carolina. Oh, oh. I mean, this is the classic. If I'm in South Carolina's huddle right now, this is the classic moment of nothing has gone our way. The crowd is against us. Caitlin's doing her thing. We're down four. Two possessions. Maybe game. three. Yeah. She hits this free throw. It's that classic moment of like, hmm, everybody breathe. It's amazing how the crowd can make you feel like it's worse than it is. Yeah. Well, it's That's, always it's, it always feels amazing. worse than the next day you watch film. You're like, I oh, didn't play that bad. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, we missed a block out there or a three there or if we would have made this shot, you know. Yeah. Like it always feels worse. All right, it's time to bring in our second quarter guest. Straight from San Diego, California's finest. Alex Morgan in the building. Alex, welcome to the show. Ride the wave. Thanks, Sue. Hey, D. How's it going? Good, good. Um, Alex, we're obviously here. It's a big moment. We were just talking about how crowds can make you feel like you're playing worse. Like, yeah, when you're playing well and the crowd's on your side, of course, that's amazing. But they can actually make you feel like you're playing worse. What are some of, like, what big moments that you've come across, whether it's a World Cup, something in the NWSL, where the crowd really impacted you? I mean, honestly, I just enjoy playing in front of crowd, good or bad, because we went through a whole Olympics without any crowd. So <laughs> that, was, that was the roughest. Um, but, I mean... I mean, yeah, it's it's almost like you got to look to your teammates in those moments because I feel like it's true, especially when you have like such a hostile crowd or they're silent on one side or rooting against you and booing you and kind of chanting against you. It it could get in your head. So I feel like it's almost just like looking at your teammates, kind of rallying the team and just hoping that um, you can turn it around and turn the momentum around, but the home for advantage is real, you know, that 12th man. Yeah. Possession goes to South Carolina. Well, Alex, we know who's going to have home court um, advantage at the World Cup, <laughs> obviously, you know, being in Australia and New Zealand. How are you guys preparing for that? I mean, the World Cup fever I had in December was um, almost <laughs> my death. I should show From that. an Argentinian family, it was the best moment of my life. I have kids, so I guess that kids and then Argentina winning. But let me know, what are you guys doing for the World Cup? What's what's going on in the next couple months to get ready? I'm pretty impressed that for you kids was first, because I would say a lot of Argentinians would say the opposite. <laughs> her wife would kill her if she didn't say that. Just suffering. Yeah. <laughs> they had a suffering. We were, it was funny, we went up 2-0 against France, and my dad goes, we're scoring soccer, and he was right because it was 3-3 three, three in a minute. Yeah, I know, you guys had it in the bag and then all of a sudden it was like it flipped in a second. So um, I was really happy for Argentina to win in and happy for you. Uh, but yeah, hoping this summer it's, it's ours to take. You know, it's four years is a long time to wait for, right. for the next uh, big tournament and um, it's a new team, you know, it's, it's such a different team. So for us, it's trying to come back after kind of a pretty disappointing finish for us in the Olympics in 21. And um, 
And I feel like we have the right team to win it. You know, it's, it's just putting the right pieces in at the right time. And you guys know a little bit of luck always helps as well. Yeah. I mean, people, it's like luck is not talked about enough. Whether it's luck about injuries, you know what I mean? Just things going your way. And speaking of going your way, I got to take it to the game real fast. Caitlin Clark right now, everything seems to be going her way. So she's the player of Iowa who, going into this game, knew she was going to have to basically carry the team. We see her walk off now, but she was probably going to have to carry the team. For you, I know in your career, you've played alongside a lot of talented players, but a lot is asked of you. So can you talk about what it's like when you enter a big moment like this, like how you prepare mentally knowing that your team's going to count on you? Honestly, I feel like, you know, players like, like Caitlin, myself, the reason that we do well in these moments is just because you thrive, like you become a different person almost. You just, you kind of focus in such a different way that's like nothing can affect you. Um, and it needs to be that way, especially uh, when the team is counting on you, especially when everyone's looking at you and kind of the pressure's on it. She was just named uh, a player, player of the year, right? So. And she's obviously has a, a huge game already. So many points she's already dropped this game. But um, it's fun watching watching a player like her. I've I've been pretty excited this tournament, kind of following her journey a little bit more. And uh, it's cool to get to know her a little bit more, you know, on on this. And I obviously I feel like South Carolina is kind of going in as the favorites, but it would be <laughs> what a story for her, you know, if she were to come out on top. I mean, you're talking about dropping buckets. Caitlin Clark now has over a thousand points this season. The sixth player in D1 history. It's amazing. I mean, we're we're going to sit with that. We're going to go to break. We'll be right back with Alex. your NWSL season. San Diego Wave pulled in 30,000 people. I mean, talk about your fan base, talk about people showing up for women's sports, and then of course just the, the opener in general. What a great name. The, the wave. wave. Let me get a hoodie, Thank Alex. You. I like that. I think it's a good, <laughs> yeah. I'll send you one for sure. Um, I like that. <laughs> no, it's, it's awesome. I mean, just seeing the numbers go up and up each year. Um, in the NWSL is awesome. And then, I mean, just talking about March Madness in, in the tournament here, the tickets were going for what, double than the men's game, the men's final four? That's pretty insane, you know? It's it's about time uh, something like that happens. So it's it's great to see that, that happening. And it's obviously awesome to just see the increase in visibility and accessibility of women's sports because you guys know we didn't we didn't have this growing up we couldn't turn on the tv and see women's sports no quick shout out to together obviously that's the company that alex myself Simone Manuel, chloe kim founded um that's a big part of why we all teamed up to do that alex's uh idea brought us on board and we're doing big things for the same for the same reasons to get women's sports out there alex we're at the final four Give me your four favorite women soccer players of all time. Mm. Ooh, favorite of it's all hard. time. Yeah, that is the four hard. that you like. I good mean, one, good those one. Those are my girls. I feel like I'm going to be very biased. Uh, I'm going to go with Abby Wambach. I'm going to go with Mia Hamm, like That's obviously the legend. The god. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, let's see, let's see. Um, I mean, I can't get Megan or Pino out of my head because of you, Sue, thanks. So we're going to add, <laughs> we're going to add Pino in there because she is, she is a legend um, as well. And uh, let's see here. Who else do we got? Uh, there's so many, it's hard to say. I mean, I feel like. We have Sophia Smith just climbing the ranks and just doing her thing as a 21-year-old. Uh, it's pretty impressive. So, yeah. gotta gotta say she's she's climbing up there. 
No, yeah. So my favorite was Michelle Akers growing up, because as uh, Sue knows, when I went to Argentina, <laughs> love a good haircut. I got my hair cut haircut. like Gabriela Sabatini, which was kind of mulledy. And I saw Michelle kinda. Akers, and I'm like, there's someone that looks like me out there. <laughs> oh, is that your C of it? Yeah. That was your C of it. Michelle Akers, can you believe that? Who oh, knew? No. Yeah. Who knew? I love and that. And then she would get tired a lot, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. she's better so, now. Yeah. So you yeah, brought up no. Megan. She was a beast for sure. Oh, she she was. was. Yeah, you brought up Megan. I actually asked her. They're watching right now. She's with Ash and Allie. They're watching right now. And I was like, what should I ask Alex? What should I ask Alex? And she was like, ask her what's the most annoying thing about me, about Megan. <laughs> so what's the most <laughs> annoying thing? I feel like you about should answer Megan? that. <laughs> no, I think Alex should answer that. I can only imagine um, Megan in the locker room. I uh you know, I feel like she, there's not like an off switch. It's just on all the time, which like I love 90% of the time, but sometimes <laughs> you just gotta take it down a notch and it doesn't exist. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that makes sense. No, it's either all on or boop, on the floor. Yeah. She's team yeah. DJ now, too. She's team TJ. Oh, she's team so DJ? So I can only imagine oh my God. that BT is everywhere. And again, it's great 90% of the time, but sometimes when you just need a moment, you literally have the pill blasting in your ear, and I'm like, I can't even hear my own thoughts. <laughs> I, could, I can see that. We love you, Megan. <laughs> All right, Alex, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was awesome to have you here. Um, good luck in the World Cup. We'll I mean, watching. I'll be there. Sweet. So we'll definitely, Thanks, we'll definitely yeah, be cheering for you guys. I'll, I'll see you there, and uh, yeah, it'd be good to see you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Alex. Caitlin going off again. Again. I mean, this kid can play basketball. Killing it. No, that's the thing. She's just a good basketball player. I mean, isn't it like their whole team was, they've been together since like seventh grade? Yeah, I think some <laughs> of them like, like played the AU together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, all the, a the Iowa teams back in the day happen, were all huh? the hardest to play against. <laughs> yeah. We were just talking about AAU and Moan was on here. Hated the Kenner Angels. Hey, you. They beat us all the what time. What a great program. Does that still exist? Uh, I don't know. Does your AAU program still exist? Yeah. Team Does Jurassic? It? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. The one you played for. No. You guys were just like Southern California. Southern California was the basketball club. Where you at? Starting five. Yeah. Michelle, Lex, Corny, Miley. I see you. I know. Last time I was at your house, we, I, you forced me to watch your highlights. I was terrible. <laughs> We were like waiting for you to be good. <laughs> it was like, no, you know, you were... it was like the eighth game on a Sunday afternoon. Well, didn't you play like the Japanese national team? We did. One of them? Yeah. yeah. They were like 22 and we were like 14. That was so funny. They would always come out to, to Orange County, that big Asian basketball community there. Amazing. The fact that you run. have those clips is amazing. I know. We should release those. There's always something. There was always that parent. Yeah. Who filmed. With the big VHS, and yeah. that was Rossi and Stephanie for us, and they would be everywhere. And like, I didn't even know what it was. Yeah. Like, and years later. It's like a foreign object. And, and they've like Back made it the digital for you. That's a little hookup. Well, you know, all this greatness and you're down one. How do you feel if you're Iowa? I don't think you're feeling good. <laughs> I think you just played. Uh, Caitlin has 19 points and you're down one. They have to shoot, like I said it going in, my thing was if they shoot over 45% from three, and I don't know what they're shooting right now, then they have a chance to win. They just were gonna have to shoot lights out, and it wasn't just Caitlin. That's a trouble. Twos aren't gonna be enough. Especially if you're gonna blow layups. Like that's how they beat Louisville. Louisville. Like that's how they, they beat Louisville. They shot lights out, right. not just Caitlin. And this is what South Carolina does. Go ahead, Beal. This is where Caitlin really has to get most of her. Mm. Man, she's got to be tired. I mean, that's like the fourth different defender they've put on yeah. her. That's where, yeah. And that's where it wears that's you down. Nice. And it's even more frustrating when you make the right pass and people are missing layups, getting blocked. Then that forces you mm -hmm. to take tougher shots. I low key think. Cardosa is going to have, or I low-key think she is the, she's the player that could end up having 
I don't want to say like the career. best pro career out right. of everyone on the floor. Most but effective. Yes. Like she, nobody talks about her. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like our starting five. She's we obviously rated. Everyone knew how great Swin was her. and Tamika, and you were okay, and I was whatever. <laughs> and we were always like, Asia's going to be the best pro, or Asia's yeah. going to have the best. Like, yeah, who's she the just most had the, Asia. Asia. She just had tools that like no one yeah. else had. No, that's Cardoza. Like nobody really talks about her. She comes off the bench. She does get honored. She was, I think, she was sixth player of the year. So she does get honored in that way in, in the SEC. But you don't talk about her a lot. I mean, she's six seven, six eight, and pretty mobile. And we know in our league, it's like if you have that size and you can move and you can move, that's that's legit. I like her game a lot, and it's the sky's the limit. She's got so much she can add. See, now I think Iowa feels pretty good about themselves. So they were like, you're going to go into halftime either up one or down one. Okay. You'd probably be happy, right? I think they're like, we play pretty well. And it's, well, they're up one now. But. Well, we said they're going to have to play superhuman to win. And yeah. Caitlin's going to have to have a, a su superhuman performance, which she's had to this point. Mm -hmm. And she'll probably have it again in the second half. Man, foul trouble is the worst. I'm still. I don't know. I'm not a coach. I've never coached, so it's like I tread lightly here. I get you only have five fouls. For post players, it might be different. I'm like, is two that much? You get five fouls. But I'm like, is two She's that got much? Three more. Put her in the game. It's like, I just, you know how difficult it is. It's going to be for her to come back in the second half and, and have like some. Get into it. Yeah, like just let her play through it. Like. Yeah. I guess if she picks up the, th I don't know. Foul is on number 45 from Iowa. I know you have some coaches that if you get that second foul. foul Especially in college, you're done. You're done. You're done. Go put your sweats on. So what I never get is when they do that in the WNBA. I say it all the time, like, we get six. Two's nothing. Two's like having one. Two is there's nothing. five. Do you think college should go to six fouls? No. I think six is too much in our league. So you think we should go to five? Yeah. The argument is that you don't want your star players being in foul trouble, which I get. My argument is it would... You would be less physical, which opens up offense, which opens up entertainment. Yeah. I could see both, both arguments. I know. I think for you, you're like, on defense, you want six. On offense, you want them to have five. <laughs> I, 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 I get what you're saying. But I heard... It's 40 minutes. No, the the men only do it because it's 48. No, I agree. Like, we have the same amount of fouls in eight less minutes. Yeah. And when you put... How about this? I'll put it this way, and this will be my final argument, and then I'll let you talk in the three seconds you have. When, you, when you play overseas... Yeah. When you're overseas, is five fouls too little? When you're playing on the national team, is five fouls even like a thought? No. All right, stick around, y'all. Stick with us for the AT&T Halftime Report. It's coming up. Halftime report. We're over here, Bird and Tarazi show. All right, we've talked a little bit about NIL since we've been on this show. We have. If you had to pick top three players, top three earners, if they had NIL, who would they be? I'll probably go with BG's in my top three. BG would have made a lot of money. Um, I will go with. I think we sh we had her on the show earlier. Cheryl Stoops would have made a lot of money. A lot of money. And Lisa Leslie would have made a killing. Okay. I'm going to go Skylar Diggins. I would say present company would be high up there. We won't include us, though. I'm going to go Skylar, Elena Deladon, and... I'm trying to go. I might, I might join you on Cheryl Swoops. Cheryl would have made a lot of that money. That might be my top three. The Texas Tech, small market, you know, like. Yeah, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. I'm forgetting a lot Candace of people. Candace Parker. Candace Parker would have made bank. Especially at Tennessee. Oh, when, my God. Yeah, when they were. She would have made bank. Yeah. I think Maya probably would have made a lot of money. Yeah, Maya would have made money. There's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people we're forgetting. All right, we're going to. Stewie would have made a lot of money. Stewie a lot of money. We're going to throw a QR code at you. We're going to get you guys to vote. You tell us. Which player? Which current player? Let us know. Would have made uh, or has the best NIL deals. That's where we're at with this. Man, Stewie would have made a lot of money. Mai would have made a lot of money. Yep. Yeah. 
There's a lot. There's a lot. Speaking of making a lot of money, I'm sure Caitlin Clark's about to make a lot of money. She's earning her money right yeah. now. No, Caitlin's balling right now. I mean, I don't have a box score, but at one point, is this where we talk about her being our child? Oh. All right, I'll, I'm going to let you deal with it. You're the mom. This is our so firstborn, Caitlin Clark. As you can see, she has the passing ability of Shoshana Bird. <laughs> she has the pull-up. She has long distance range, like middle linebacker Tarazi. <laughs> and she has the swaggy competitiveness of both of us. Let's this go. is our love child born <laughs> in the internet era. They need to do that like face mesh thing. <laughs> And they put the faces over. <laughs> I mean, I she mean, must be really it. good. She's two of us. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, who was a sucked? <laughs> she's, uh, no, she's you know legit. What? She's like, All right, she, tell me, tell me when you talk about Caitlyn or when you think of Caitlyn and you think of the next level, what to you like jumps off the page from like this translates? I mean, the, the three things that she can do at a high level: shooting, shooting off the dribble. Mm -hmm. Yep. And her passing ability. She's already going to be able to change the game. And at her size, there's just not that many people that can yeah, do that. Yeah, she's tall. Yeah, you, she's, you she's, can pick, she's your height -ish. You can pick one or two things, but, I mean, she has all all three things covered. And then defensively, she's going to have to figure it out, right? No, she'll figure it out, yeah. She's obviously, her, her three years in college, they, they do a good job of, of yeah. hiding her because she has such a load to carry on offense. Right. I mean, tonight she's got 19 points on 7 of 12. Three, three of seven from three, six assists. I mean, that's what happens. What I wonder is, at the next level, what do you do when the ball's not in your hands all the time? Because yeah, that's an adjustment for every player. My counterpoint is she is going to have the ball. Like, she's going to be your starting point guard playing 35 minutes a game. So you think she's game. a point guard? She's always going to be a point she's guard. She's a point guard, okay. I mean, they're going to eventually want to put a no, speedier you guard, yeah, yeah. you know, and you have that two-guard well, combo. it's kind of like combo. Sabrina in a way. Sabrina can play point guard. She also exactly. has a heartbeat at the two. So it's and kind I, of like... And when we played together, we obviously kind of shared that duty of like, you know, if I have it, I'll bring it up and, and vice versa. But I think she is your starting point guard of yeah. whatever team she goes to. And if she declares early... Could be the Phoenix Mercury? Could be. <laughs> what pick do you have? We don't have one. <laughs> but we'll take her in the third round. <laughs> Wait, how do you not have one? How'd that go? Would you trade it for? It was in the Webster's. It was in the Webster's? The Emanuel Webster's. Yep. You know, yep. the shifting and trading yeah. of assets in the WBA. I know, but who'd you get? Can I vanish. Can... I believe, I don't know, it was in a trade. Okay. That's for the suits. It's for the suits? I thought you wanted to be a GM. I can't hear you. I thought you wanted to be a GM. Are you cutting me off? Oh, are you we'll cutting... Back. oh, you're cutting me off? <laughs> this halftime report is presented by AT&T. We believe connecting changes everything. This halftime report is presented by AT&T. We believe connecting changes everything. Welcome back to the AT&T halftime report. We got the Bird and Tarasi show. We've got a poll we're gonna get to, best NIL deal current. We've got top-notch guests coming up for you, Lisa Leslie and Doris Burke. And we're also gonna show a little video of the time that I visited the Iowa women's basketball team. This is so funny because they were adorable when I walked in. Like super surprised, a little bit shocked. It was very sweet. You're gonna see it now. I was a little nervous. I was like, what am I going to say? What is this going to be like? Um, but what's really funny about this is, you know, I sat down with the team. They do a little circle thing. I sat Indian style. I felt really good about that. I was nervous if I was going to get up, but it all worked out. Um, I actually told them, I was like, listen, the Elite Eight game is the hardest game in the tournament. Always. The hardest game. So I basically was just telling them, prepare for the hard, right? Like, embrace the fact that it's not going to go your way. Embrace the fact and be ready for the fact that you're probably not going to win by 20. And I literally said, I was like, your coaches are going to want you to win by 20. Fans are going to hope you win by 20. You might even want to win by 20. But you're probably not going to win by 20. And then they went out and won by 20. By <laughs> 30. So I was like, the advice went a long way. But it was pretty funny. Um, it was also really cool to, uh, you know, very, not rarely, but every now and then you get to see 
the impact you've had on younger generations or how they look at you. The same way we look at Cheryl, the same way we're probably going to look at Lisa when right. she comes on set. So to see that and have them look at me that way, it was, it was really cool, really special. I was happy to do it. Um, I had a good time. That's an amazing moment. It was cool. I remember I went to a uh, preseason WBA game at the Anaheim Pond when I was 14, and I saw Tisha Pinachero and the way she passed that ball. And I was like, I want to be like Tisha, you know? And you have those little moments. Like I loved Gabriel Batituta, who was an Argentinian striker. And when I played soccer, I wanted to be Batigol. <laughs> what? There's always those moments, right? Those people Is that, a that professional player? A professional is like the best striker ever to come out of Argentina. Okay. He's played in Fiorentina in Italy. Um, besides the point. But the impact you made on those kids that day, you know, they probably still talk about that. They're probably that in, in halftime today, like Sue says, I can be easy. <laughs> you know how you take those little things no, you with do. you? And, they, yeah. and especially in a team setting, they yeah. can go a long way. Totally. But it's true. It's true. Every moment in the NCAA tournament, it's like, it's never going to go your way all the time. And those moments you have to remember, like, they play basketball too. Hey, they're in there practicing, they're watching video. They play basketball And they have too. little scout papers that they give to everyone. They're running their play. Well, I mean, I think it was my junior year. We went into halftime down like 15 to Texas. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they were way better than us. Mm -hmm. And then we just found a way to kind of chip away at it and we ended up winning and going on to the finals. But, you know, you're gonna have a hard game. And oh, yeah. maybe that's the hard game for South Carolina, where they're not playing well, where they're in foul trouble, where the other team is making everything, but they feel like the crowd's against them. Well, maybe this is South Carolina's moment to see really who they are. Yeah, all right, we're gonna go uh, head to that social wall, see what's happening on the Twitter machine. Oh, somebody got a back shot of us. Easy. Solo Cup's gone, keeping that drink cold, I see. I just love that you cannot see any of this. <laughs> Let me see. Let's see. I need Let's a 24. I'll read them to you. I need a 24/7 feed of these two. Right now, I'm craving sushi for dinner. <laughs> Thank you, Bert Terrasa Show. Shrimp tempura. <laughs> Want to you know, get weird? You know show what's the cool about this? this? I wish we I never got to the poll. D was talking too much. We never got to the poll. I wish I had someone in college that would read for me. <laughs> <laughs> they are this sick. is great. You should have read for me. Poll is closed. All right, <laughs> the poll is closed. We're going to give you a glimpse. Who has the best NIL deal? Oh, Paige Beckers. Let's go, Paige. What's she making? How much money? $376 million? Yes. All right. We got more basketball for you. This is going to be a good second half. This has been the AT&T Halftime Report. You know what we do with these cards. We throw them. Stay tuned for the second half. We'll be here with you. All right, welcome back to the Bird and Tarasi Show presented by AT&T. We are so excited for this second half. Will Caitlin Clark be able to keep up this pace? Will South Carolina figure out how to get Aaliyah Boston involved? Zaya Cook has been holding it down. And we have the perfect person to talk about all of this, Lisa Leslie. Welcome to the show, Lisa. Hi, guys. Lisa. I'm so proud of you guys. First off, let me just say, I love the two of you <laughs> as my teammates, y'all forever my teammates, but just having this opportunity, this is awesome. Well, we never thought we would be hosts, but here we are. Lisa, host? what do oh, we? Host. Oh, host. Right, right. Well, we've been there. <laughs> oh, are, we going there? are we going there already? <laughs> no, my bad, my bad. What do we do with Aaliyah? Like, we were just talking about how, like, some coaches dead set. When you get two fouls, that's it. You're sitting. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Especially, you know, host players, you're so reliant on guards getting you the ball and yeah. making sure, like, you're involved. That's probably the thing I hated most about college basketball was the foul situation. Two fouls, you always have to sit out. Right. But you're also relying on your big to be aggressive. And so it's hard to be aggressive and stay out of foul trouble. So those two fouls, as you know, in the WNBA, it's Caitlin scores again. But in the WNBA, you get two fouls, you're good. You get that third foul, you got to sit, right? So that gives you a little bit more cushion. But it's tough. Aaliyah got two tough calls, one a little questionable in my opinion, but it is what it is. I know. So when you watch this game, and really just college basketball in general, we asked uh, Cheryl the same question. It's like, what players 
jump off the page to you? Like, it doesn't have to be favorites, but just like, what players do you think like, oh, I see them having like really, really good long pro careers? Well, I mean, you can't go without noticing Caitlin Clark. Right. She, she's phenomenal. And again, she's a little bit of like both of you. Like, Diane is a bucket at all times, and she's a bucket like, at, I don't care where she shoots from, you think it's going even. Her, even her misses look good, like, right. like yours, Diana. And then Sue, she's a passer like you. Like, her assist, the cross courts, the ability to see the floor, hit the bigs on the roll, pick and roll. So she's been phenomenal and, and really a game changer. And we don't say that lightly because we know, obviously, the game. But she's been phenomenal. Well, I was saying, it's like she has these nights and you think, okay, she can't possibly do it again. And she keeps coming back with these performances. But there's something to be said about when you play for your, for your hometown, right? I mean, obviously, being from L.A., you play for USC. There's just a different type of feeling when you have a whole state where you're from, right. and I think she's playing with that on that chip on her shoulder. She definitely has that chip on her shoulder. But uh, again, I say it reminds me just from me being in the post and watching her as a guard. She has a little bit of you, you know, you you you, you took some folks out a little bit. But but you're strong, and that's what it takes to be a champion. But also kind of like the swoops too, you know, like she's she can guard. She's unstoppable. She can take over this game literally by herself. And, and I think we've all been there, but I, I love the fact that women's basketball has so much attention right now. Right. So I'm just like proud, regardless of who it is, Iowa, South Carolina, and what they've been able to do all year. It's just great for women's basketball. Yeah, I was just thinking like, you must be proud. Like you're one of the, I know you're not necessarily like the O-O-O-G, like Nancy Lieberman. Yeah. Like, I'm, the, I'm the third tier OG. But, but, when it comes OG. To, but it's true, but when it comes to women's professional basketball yeah. here, like talk about what it's like seeing the game grow the way it has, given that you were literally there day one. I'm so proud. I really am. And I feel like I didn't know that I was going to see this like in my lifetime, really like the game evolve the way that it has. The ability to see individuals get better, shooting, range, dunking, jumping higher, the individual. When we played, we had like three or four players that were like high caliber ballers, and then the other six or eight were like role players. You had just a shooter or just a defender would come in. Now, you know, the WNBA and even here in college, the game has grown so much. I love the hair and the lashes and the, all the nails and y'all know I've always been in the fashion. So I'm like, go girls, go girls. You got on top of that from day one for sure. Y'all look cute. They got me glad I don't have an NIL, boy. I would have been all over it. We were just, you made these top three. We were like, who would cash out oh, in the like NIL? Oh, someone would have been in everything. In yeah. L.A., USC, you guys were stacked, like, bro. And <laughs> you already know. I All know. of us up here bitter. So do you think, I mean, obviously, I feel like NIL, there are things that maybe aren't helping the game, but I'm happy these kids are getting paid. For sure. being in college and playing basketball, going to school, it's a job. I don't care. You can say student athlete, blah, blah. It's a job. It's, it's a physically job. demanding on your body, on your mind. Like, look at the pressure these kids have on them right now. There's 30,000 people in here, millions watching. They're, they're 18, 19 years old. Like, it's a real job. But I, I love the fact that both teams are really rising to the occasion. They're giving their best. This is great for television and for views. Like, again, that goes back to me just being, like, proud of the, the moment. Right. You know, but the NIL, oh, man, I would have been killing, because you know me. Do you, the fact whether well, it's talking, speaking, the photos, like all oh, of no. that is, but that's authentically me, you know what I'm saying? You want to hit all those categories. Oh, we're like, you know, I would have been there my, with like a fine. soft drink. One of my RC Cola. Welcome. Let me say, though, I do appreciate both of you being your authentic selves, though, and that's that's right. the part that I love about you guys as individuals, you guys together as friends. That's what how it was with Dawn and I. Dawn's right. Philly. You know, uh, we're so opposite. I'm Hollywood, but <laughs> our friendship is just authentic in that way that we're happy with who we are. Right. And that's the beauty of it. That's why I love you guys. You guys, even as teammates, just being your authentic selves as leaders, coming in, I, I appreciate that. But ballers, man. Isn't it amazing how we look back on it and we got to share the court in 2004, which was just like, you know, you were in, you're just yeah, you and Don and us like, yeah, in 2004. out of your mind.
in prime. When we were just yeah. two little You're young like, kids, like, how much can we take in? Like, how much Sue. can we watch? I'm going to tell you, when I hear Sue, like, now, and I'm like, Sue did not say a word. <laughs> <laughs> like, when they were like, and I appreciate, that's why I'm so proud, again, because you've used your platform. You've been helpful, supportive <laughs> for women's <laughs> rights, for equality, for black women. Like, that's love, man. And I was like, that little girl said almost nothing for, like, a whole year. But I was still, like, I was feeling y'all's vibe. You know what I'm right. saying? As a younger group coming in. Because for me, it's about the hard work. Right. It's about putting in the time. It's about making people better around you. And that is the part where I have so much respect for you guys as the young group. And then watching oh, you grow. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I mean, that was just a great group. Crazy. Like, we all just got along really well. Yeah. Like, we just had so much mutual respect for everyone. And that came from you guys. I mean, you guys were all in your prime. And we saw you guys coexist. Yeah. Give up a little part of yourselves to win a gold medal. I mean, that's I, that was the first no, thing I was like, that's man. my takeaway too. Yeah. Like they're actually like you guys didn't care about points, rebounds. I, I feel like it was Dawn that said it. It was like nobody. Or no, maybe it was you. Like nobody Those remembers who remember. led the nobody team remembers. in scoring. Nobody remembers who had this, this, that. They only remember the gold medal. That's it. Yeah, and that got that got passed down, and then hopefully we pass that on. Absolutely. So, Lise, what's next well. for you? What's like? What is like? The CBS your next it. couple years. Yeah, your next well, couple years look like because you were doing the big three for a while. Oh, I'm yeah. still doing the You're big three. Doing, okay. Coaching in the big three. I am on CBS. Thank yeah. you. Shout out to. We need to talk. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm here for. I, I interview the coaches tomorrow. The winners of both the championship teams. Oh, so you got okay. Miss Mulkey already. Well, I got Kim Mulkey, of yeah. course. Yeah. I don't know Get what I'm wearing tomorrow. I'm yeah. <laughs> 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 So I cover the men also, okay. so I go to that yeah. game tomorrow. You come. Huskies. I think Huskies we got a chance. Bro, I, mean, I think, I think we got a, a chance. legit chance. This they is the first time I like, did they just swap or what? Basically. I know, yeah. They're tired of being in y'all's shadows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they dope. haven't been there in a while, but Dan has done a great job. Yes. Best men's uniforms ever. Mm. They're in that old school UK jersey. Like yeah, I love that. Only them. you guys could they appreciate that. Sorry, I missed it. I didn't notice the uniform, but they've been balling. They hey, well, we got a we got a uh, 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 Juju going to USC. I mean, that's, that's a huge cool. get, right? Like that's for huge. the Trojan program and for you guys back there. Huge. We got a timeout coming. When okay. we come back, we can get into the Juju. I actually want to ask you if you were coaching South Carolina, what would you be telling them? Okay, we'll find out when we get back. I mean, she is killing them right now. Welcome back to the Bird and Tarasi Show, presented by. Oh, you know, AT&T. We're here with the legend herself, Lisa Leslie. Um, right before we went out, we went off to break. I was about to ask you if you're Don, if you're the head coach of South Carolina, mm -hmm. number one team in the country, undefeated, down six. With the way the game is going, what would you be telling your team? One that we're in a really good place right now. Being only being down six and not playing our best basketball. It's going to be our time to stay diligent. But here's the thing. You don't have to shoot a three-point shot, but a 17-foot shot, 16-foot shot is fine. Just stay in your rhythm. Hit your outside shots. For the post, stay on the boards and everybody crash. The third thing is you got to stop letting them get out for fast breaks. Yeah. Guards have got to get back because you can't allow them to take that ball out as fast as they have been and getting a layup. Like, that's unacceptable. Well, if we know anyone that can be – Don, it's Lisa who coached <laughs> the WBA All-Star team that beat out the Olympic team before Tokyo. Yeah, thanks, so, a lot. No. thanks, Lisa. Thanks, a lot. Was, thanks for looking out. I, I, I looked down, look down the thing. I was like, are they, is you are and Tina were going so hard cheering? with the clipboard like, no, and the height. You know, this is what I said to them. I don't want to come and coach because I only know how to do one thing, and that's win. That's so I point. said, now, do you want me to come and bring my best? Or you just, if you want it just to be like a you little all-star game, let somebody else, <laughs> hey, get somebody else to do it. They called me, you already know. I was like, look at Tina and Lisa over there. Yeah, just we was giving the it to them, too. You guys yeah, want to plays, defensive schemes, get back on the roller. But you know yeah. why? To make sure you guys are prepared for goals. We were, that was a nice little wake-up call. Oh, it worked. It worked, and then we right? lost our show. It worked. It worked. It's like, hey, it's never guaranteed that you're going to win gold. You got to no. go get it. Lisa, you Definitely. said this. I was playing amazing basketball, and this is a two possession game, just like that. Two like, possession game. Just it's never over. Eye. Like, it really isn't. And we were saying earlier how it's, at the end of the day, it's these college kids that are going to make mistakes, right? So if you can limit those going into the fourth quarter. Yep. 
and play your best basketball, which South Carolina always seems to figure that, that out. But again, we got to give Iowa a lot of credit. Uh, there's, I don't think there's ever been a game I watched South Carolina play in the last two years where I was really nervous. Yeah. And I was nervous because Iowa has all the pieces. Mm -hmm. They have the chemistry. We know chemistry takes us a long way when you have that type of teammates that understand who pass and give up their shot for a Look at Caitlin at the end of the half. She could have taken that shot. Good point. Her shot was a, already a great shot. She's a bucket, man. I'm she serious. She's a like, bucket. Diana, I don't know. Now, you know, you guys don't see me do interviews about you a lot, but when people ask me about, like, my favorite players, you're one of them. And I say that in a way out of respect of being on the court with you as a teammate and playing against you. Like, nobody could – oh, I don't want to say bad words. Nobody <laughs> could bring it. I'm like, damn. But Caitlin, she, she's – She's nice. What do you think? Like, what do you – like, my question for you is, what do you think of her game? It's, it's like I said earlier, she keeps doing it every night. And I think we've all been in those positions when you're just in that right space. Yeah. And it, like we said, it's everything's slow. Everything, like your yeah. chemistry's all, everyone knows that she's the go-to and everyone's okay with it. Cheryl said it earlier, when she was in Texas Tech, you know, she would shoot it 10 times in a row. Yeah. Keep shooting it, Cheryl. Yeah. And you know, Cheryl was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. You only have to tell her once, but we know. Cheryl wouldn't pass the song. So, <laughs> like, she was just, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's been, it's just been great to see you guys. Yeah. You know, and I don't, I think that's one thing in women's basketball we have to do better. Yeah. That's what we have to, like, when you watch the NBA, they yeah. take care of their legends. Facts. They make sure they, they put the legends where they're supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. And we need to do that better. You know, people in the league, people are about to retire, the WNBA itself, the NCAA, like, yeah. we really need to hold up the people like you, Cheryl, Kate, the people that, like, set the way for us, Dawn. Like, you guys were in Martin. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're so funny. Like, I used to go to the forum and watch you play. That's crazy, right? Now you're really taking it back. But you're 100% you're right. I think the WNBA can, we can all do better with keeping that camaraderie and just recognizing that we're, we're all connected. And I think what happened with BG probably made it even more, I don't know, like bigger to understand like how connected we are and being able to use our platforms and our voices and to keep our name going. You know what I mean? Like just, just that small thing. It seems small to us because, but together we're so strong and we have to keep that. We really do. No, absolutely. I mean, one of the highlights, I mean, we're joking about losing to the all-star team and, you know, being in Vegas, I don't think, but like one of the highlights was being around the 96 team. Yeah. Like, why don't we do that more? Like we got to have that, I mean, I wouldn't call it dinner, but it was like a little bit of yeah. a cocktail hour type vibe. Yes. We took the picture. We got to hang out, spend time with you guys and just talk. Yeah. And like, that's the type, those are the moments that keep you connected. We got to figure that out. Is that supposed to be all-star weekend for the WNBA? Maybe, yeah. Maybe. Is it our job to do it or is it, you know, their job to do it? Or is it like, maybe the, the players, middle? Maybe the players, it's almost like all-star weekend. Maybe it's the Players Association. We need some, a little right, bit of help the players to try to figure that out. Yeah. All right, I'll call NECA. Yeah. We'll ask her. She's yeah, going to we'll be on the show her. on Sunday, right? Yeah. yeah. We'll ask NECA. Ask That's going to be on NECA's. Make it work. Like, she doesn't have enough things to do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she can handle it. She went to she, Stanford. She can't handle it. <laughs> you know, you, everything goes back to the, she, well, she went to Stanford. Okay. Yeah, let's go oh, back to Stanford? Juju. You'll be fine. Going oh, to USC. Yeah, That's a yes. huge That's deal for LA, for LA basketball, for her to be able to stay home. Kiki obviously went to UCLA. Yeah. I mean, that could be an interesting ride. For, yeah. for a long time, which it already is. I, I, I love the fact that she chose to stay home, as right. I did. It is very tough, and like I told her, it's hard to rebuild a program. And I, I did that, and I made that sacrifice. I didn't go, you know, SC was like last in the pack. Wait, who else recruited you? Like, what were your top schools? I was recruited by every everybody. School. What were your top schools? My last five schools was uh, Stanford, USC, Notre Dame, Ooh, yeah. Tennessee, and Long Beach State. Okay, but Long yeah. Beach State because local, they've recruited local. me since I was like yeah, seven or eight. And who doesn't right, want right. to play the pyramid, right? Right, right, you know, right. It's like, right. Well, so sorry, that, so you chose us. I didn't mean to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was me and Bill. I had an L.A. happen right here. It was me and Bill, but yeah. No, but you know, um, listen, I love Pat. You know, God bless Pat. Pat yeah. was amazing, but... Uh, I wanted to do something different, and I chose to stay at USC and thinking I could turn around a program, and we did end up winning the Pac-10, but 
Bro, that was hard. Like, out of all yeah. the decisions in my whole life, like, that college is always the one where I'm like, I love SC. But man, that was hard. Yeah. I needed some, you know, you need help. You guys yeah. know, you need you need some more All-Americans with you. And then you by the that. time Tina got there, you know, I was at, I was a senior. I think she was maybe a sophomore or freshman. Yeah. I don't even remember, but it was like, <laughs> just, not a, just not enough pieces. We were balling, but we needed, you know, a few more. Uh, we had Carleen Thompson, oh, yeah. amazing oh, yeah. shooter. Oh, me and Carleen, we had some great games. Yeah, so we needed like, so we had some pieces, but it was just, and then our coach got fired, Marianne Stanley, mm -hmm. shout out to Coach Stanley, and then Cheryl Miller came in as our coach, and she had never coached before, so we were, we did all we could do, but. Wait, did you play for Fred? Did Fred come after? Fred, no, Fred was there too. Okay, Fred yeah, was there too. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, back to Juju, I'm, ho yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. hopeful. I'm hopeful for her and trying to help turn around a program and just yeah. get SC on the map. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you can do it and get some more players there. I mean, the talent we have there in LA. Yeah, like but, I, yes. I mean, I talk about all the time. You like, left LA I too. I was just going to say, how do you feel about leaving? <laughs> I know. Here. It was a hard decision. It was down to UCLA and Connecticut. And literally, I, was it was it? Like, UCLA oh, yeah. and Connecticut? Like, I committed to Connecticut Dang, and I still couldn't call Kathy. Like, because I wanted to stay in L.A. so yeah. bad with my friends and my family. But That's if I tough. was staying in L.A., I'd be fat and pregnant right now. So, oh. you know, I think I made the right decision. <laughs> no, you made a great decision. You made a great decision. And sometimes it, it, I, I, I always thought about what would have happened if I would have gone to Stanford yeah. and if I would have yeah. played under Tara before the Olympic team. But just having that opportunity, I don't know. Did you, yeah, would you, like, would your SATs have, would, would you have made it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, come on, D. Okay. Well, you know, come on, story. you know. I feel like we talked about this last year. No, yeah, you, you know yeah. my masters. Come on, D. You know, know. you know my education know is up there. Money. I know. Come on. That's why you went to Florida for taxes. I know you're exactly. you got your <laughs> Speaking of what else I'm Smart. doing, you know, my real estate. Anytime you guys oh, are ready to buy and sell some property, okay. I got seven, no, six Air Airbnbs. Uh -huh. All in Florida? All in Florida? Florida. That's where your license is? Game. I can't breathe. All right, Lisa, thank you so much for coming on. Me. Yeah, no, this is amazing. Thank you so much. All right. Don't Man, we got a whole fourth quarter. All-star. Yes, all-star. Okay. We'll see you there. Well, you still playing. You Lock playing it in. Your day? Lock it in. We'll be back. Oh. LA, LA. Still going to pay me. I'm going to play. <laughs> All right, welcome back. I mean, we just had an epic chat with Lisa Leslie. From what I understand, though, this game is good. I mean, Caitlin's balling. South Carolina's just right there. They're, They're right, right there. there. Right They're there. feeling good going into the fourth. All right, let me read some tweets for you, D. Tweet away. How much money do we have to raise for charity to have Diana Taurasi wear the Kim Mulkey jacket for the fourth quarter? Oh, man. <laughs> Bird Taurasi is the best version this sports commentary format. I read that wrong. Tell me I'm more. I'm watching Bird Taurasi broadcast of the game because they have no filter. <laughs> oh, you think this is no filter. New drinking game for the Bird and Tarasi show. Every time Sue Bird says shout out, you drink. Am I shouting out too much? Apparently you are. Shout out. Drink. Shout out Courtney Mays for the outfit. Um, now we're gonna hit, hit some tweets. See what's up, what's going on in, what's up Twitter, in the Twitter world. No Got tweets. Some fans. Just Bird some Tarasi, if Gino is coaching right now, what would his game plan be against Caitlin Clark? I mean, we know what coach would do, face guard her. Four man zone behind, make someone else beat you. I mean, you. and if you're gonna do it, shout out Coach Ariama. You have to do it. You can't just do it one possession. You can't do it half the possession. You have to do it the whole game. It's funny. I feel like I was always the guy guarding that person because I was so bad on defense. He was like, just stay on her because you're gonna have a lot of yeah. help. Like, just do that. <laughs> so I was always the guy guarding, just which is funny if you think that. about it. All right. Bert Tarazi, what shoes are you wearing, Sue? Oh, these are some Doc Martens. Should we get a close-up? Man, Doc Barnes, we're at seven holes. There it is. I gotta hold my leg up. This is the one thing about retirement. Quads go quick. Look at you. <laughs> Got some Doc Martens. Shout out Courtney Mays, I already said that. Drink. I need a All refill. Right. It's fourth quarter noise time, I believe, is what the kids say these days. What do you got? <sighs> South Carolina is going to find a way. They always do. What do you and it's got? Not, what else do you got? Like, what else do you have for me? 
I got, I got, we're connecting now with Doris Burke. Brought Get out of here. That's what I've got. A card. <laughs> Shout out. Because whoever's drinking, keep drinking. Shout, Shout out. out. CV, what's up? I'm this? so happy when I see Doris oh, Burke. I love seeing Doris. Like, there's just something about the amount of basketball knowledge you have in your head. I get no. this just makes me like. I get nostalgic. It gives me goosebumps. That's you what you I do. It, this makes me nostalgic. Yes. So I'm, I'm a, like, I'm a, here's what I think of. a 20 year old. Shoe bird in the Big East Championship. Oh left elbow jumper, boom. Give game. me more. <laughs> Give me more. How game. incredible was that? That was incredible. I mean, there's just certain games that just like will always stick in your, in your head. Yeah. I don't think I asked you this and I'm dying to know if it's true because I've told this story five million times. It's I funny, think I it's true. I tell a lot of stories aren't true either. So your freshman year, I think you played in Knoxville. Is that true? We did, yeah. And you hit a big three late. I did. And you turned around <laughs> and said, this is my effing house. I believe Knoxville was. Is that when you punched? That was when I punched. The backdrop? Yeah. That's, what's yeah. it called? That's I one of the I greatest eat. basketball stories of all time. You know she's my favorite yeah, player like, ever. Yeah, I know. Because she's like 18 doing that. Not close. 18 doing that. And they're doing these little celebrations. You know, <laughs> but you know, they didn't have it at every angle either. I feel bad for these kids. They can't do anything. Yeah. There was yes. being video recorded, videotaped, like sound everywhere. Like, yeah. like, do they get to go out and just walk the streets with no. a tall can and hang out? But isn't that the trade off with the NIL? I guess you get paid a lot of money. Yeah, not to like do you that. get paid a lot of money. I, and then, I, uh, I could hold my tall boy if I get yeah. paid. <laughs> <laughs> Doris, do you still enjoy coming to these Final Fours? You covered I mean, so this is, many this of is them. Your day off. Are you kidding me? This game is so good. Like, Caitlin Clark may be the most compelling basketball player in, in the country right now. Yeah, we keep absolutely. saying she does it night after <laughs> night. Again, you thought this would be the most challenging night only because South Carolina just has so many defenders, so much size, yeah. so much length. And she's just figuring out a way to get to the basket, find little dump downs. Yeah, and I, I'm impressed with what they're doing defensively. Here we go again. I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? Key, that's your range. I love that. I love that. So when you watch the game, do you watch it with like your, your analyzing yeah, ball no. balls or do you watch it with your Tonight heart? I'm having a, a ball. I'm just, well, I'm fanning out on these two teams, truly. And you guys are talking about Coach Oriyama. Like, look at what they're doing to the bigs. I know. Oh, I know. They're just face guarding. They're sending a second and third defender. Like, what do you do here? You know where your advantage is. And what does Coach Oriyama always say? The later the game gets, what gets harder? Jump right. shooting. Absolutely. Get tight. And he this also, is when she's the most dangerous right here. Oh, my God. Oof. And he also says, I mean, it's not rocket science. You said it earlier. He also says threes are worth more than two. Yes. Right. And that was the one thing about Aya going into this game. To me, South Carolina, I said this earlier, they score what they score what they score. Yeah. It doesn't matter who they're playing. They're going to be like 60s, 70s. Right. But when they play against a team that can put up numbers like Iowa, that was going to be the challenge, and we're seeing it now. All right, but I got a question, because I've never been in this moment now, guys. We're getting down to like five minutes. Possession ball game in a final four. South Carolina's been there. Iowa isn't. I need to know from a player's perspective who's lived this life right here, right now, what's happening? Well, I think I think when you've been in it, it's a lot more time than you think. You know, and that's the only thing that might get Iowa in trouble. They might like the shot Kalen just took. Yeah. Maybe the moment little... speeds up even more when you start seeing that clock dwindle down. For South Carolina, they're playing the same as if it was the first quarter right now. Because they know they've been there. And they've won a lot of games like this. Well, we were talking earlier, it's like, which is more valuable, having that experience, that knowledge, or having a little bit of ignorance? Right. A little bit of, I don't know. Yeah. I've never been here. Right. I'm just going to go out there. I don't know what the pressure is. I don't know what the expectations are. And you get to just go play. And South that's what makes this compelling. South Carolina has more pressure, yes. which, which you guys know about. So for people that are having to make shots here, if a team is going to get a tight booty hole, it's going to be South Carolina. Well, I'm just going to put that out there. One, it's tough because they're going to have to do something they're not good at to win this game. Yeah. Which is? If make a shot. Make, shot. make a shot. <laughs> I mean, very right. simple. We're going to come back in a couple minutes. We got Doris here. Break it down for us. The expert. The Bird and Tarasi Show is presented by AT&T. We believe connecting changes everything. Okay. Welcome back to the Bird 
Jason Tarasi show. We are so lucky to have DB Doris Burke sitting with us as we watch Caitlin Clark put on an amazing performance. DB, what do you see in Caitlin? I mean, just a player who is able to give her entire team confidence. Yeah. She's so skilled. She puts the ball where it needs to be. The innate feel to know where defenders are on your body or to know where your player's going to, you know, how to hit the pocket pass. The pass she threw in the first half where she curls around the defender, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. How many kids <laughs> in the country can make that pass? No, no. I mean, they're tweeting about it. Caitlin's out there cooking. D, we were talking about it at the break. What makes Caitlin special, Iowa special, in the way that they're able to, with their game plan, attack South Carolina? Well, I think, and we've talked about it a lot, they're really confident in what they do. They know who they are as a team. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not going to waver. They don't have to do anything different to win this game. They have to do it at a high level. Whereas South Carolina is being forced to do things they just don't like to do. I mean, Aaliyah catching the ball 20 feet from the basket is not ideal. But then she gets it back. And, you know, she's had a hard time finishing she's with the other time. big bodies in, in, in the paint. And they, Doris said it. They've had a great game plan against her to take her yeah. out. And the, on the flip side, she's had to actually guard someone. And she's in foul trouble. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, Lisa Buter, you're talking about it also, like her game plan. Couldn't be more impressed. I mean, there's a level of physicality they're bringing to the post. They're obviously outside. South Carolina's just running body after body after body. Mm -hmm. um, but I give these kids credit from Iowa. They are fighting tooth and nail. They're getting some, some help from their guards. And here's, here's what I've struggled with as a fan, right? Because I love to see people succeed. You're watching players from South Carolina not be guarded. There isn't a player within 12 feet. You know how hard that is as a player? Uh, like to be disciplined and not shoot it, to not lose your confidence. Absolutely. To not step outside yourself. Listen, Lord. I've played in games. I feel like we can. I can go on the record. I'm a pretty good shooter. I've played in games where you can tell the other team's game plan because I played with a Lauren Jackson or a Brianna Stewart yeah. or a Diana Trazzi. It's like, they're like, all right, we might in a pick and roll with Stewie and Lauren, we might go under. We might, that might be like, we're gonna we're gonna let sushi. Oh, that gets in your head immediately. That, that, oh, absolutely. That gets in your that mind. That gets in your head. So imagine, right? Yeah. If you're imagine not these kids. Sugar, exactly. Yeah. And, and you're 18 right. or 22. <laughs> and to be and honest, 30,000 people. I was probably been the more physical team in the post. They really have. And to be able to do this, you have to do it every possession. Because if not, it's a foul. You know that yeah. goes. When you try to be physical yeah, every once in a the while, the call it, call it, boom, you're out of it. You can't do it. They've done it since the first possession. Now, what I like about watching Iowa is, and of course, we're going to go to break as I, this happens to me every time. <laughs> I love this show. Tease it, tease it out to break, <laughs> baby. She's we're going to talk be about brilliant. Iowa and how they remind me of a WNBA team when we get back. Big, big, baby. Welcome back as we take a peek into the Iowa huddle. What I like about this team and the way that they play is they know where their bread is buttered. Very similar to a WNBA team in that way. You know who your players are, who you're trying to get the ball, who you're trying to create space for, obviously, Clayton Clark. And then you have those supplemental players that show up. But every single thing they do has space into it. It's not equal opportunity. Right. It's this is who we need to give the ball to and let her create and put her in the best positions possible. And to me, that has been my WNBA experience. And that to me is how you win championships. It's, this is not an equal opportunity game. It's just not. And I think South Carolina is having a hard time finding touches for Aaliyah, space for Aaliyah. Like they're having a hard time finding somewhere to put her basically for her to be successful. And I don't know how, how they get to that cross screens, up screens, down screens, which they're not really executing very well. There she is at the high post, which that kick can hit. That's a big three. That's, that's a pressure shot. Yes, big time. That was a huge three. Four minutes. This is why it's becoming increasingly difficult, though, to D's point to play non shooters, because if the coaching is really good and you got to come off one or two people, you can take away so much you can. And I mean, you've seen that in the NBA to the what? To the effect where you're like, okay, you have too many shooters now and not enough people that can do anything else, right? <laughs> I know. Like, it's almost the balance is just, it's. <laughs> I was going to say, in terms of the professional game, 
What do you see as being maybe like that cycle of co like oh, will post players will, it, will a center a dominant center yeah. come back around once teams start to shift away from it or it's like the three point shooting is just too much. That's over to the contend floor, with. The floor is so spaced. Yeah. It's over. Um, so it's hard to imagine. I think it's becoming increasingly difficult to play in the NBA if you don't think it at a high level and if you don't shoot it because the you know the schemes are so good sometimes like people can be critical of it because in the playoffs what happens it slows down yeah and you're just attacking the same defender play after play after play after play you don't see that in college no you don't see picking on people in college no and i remember i went to uh, when the suns played the bucks we have in the finals we happen to be playing and watching chris paul chris paul with the ball he would bring a guy up yep and if they didn't switch, that guy would leave. He'd bring another guy up, yep. whatever defender he wanted, and he would just wait. He would just wait until he got the switch he wanted. And just, there was a patience about that that you don't really see in the college game. There's not a lot of patience. Chris Ball did that exact thing. There's Caitlin going again. Nice left hand finish. He did it the other night. Big was in drop. He just kept going, okay. You're gonna play in drop. I'm gonna up. get to my mid range. I'm bring gonna two up. point you to death. That's it, yeah. <laughs> oh, dang. Wow, how about this turnover big moment? This is where I wonder, like, they're expected to win. Iowa's putting all kinds of game pressure on oh, here. Oh, that's a rough miss right there. Yeah, that If they score here. Ugh. Man, I love games when it's battle of styles. It's like my favorite thing. Yeah. When it's just two styles, and it's just who's going to overpower the other. Are you guys talking here? Like, if your teammates are talking here, how much conversation are you just, is it just memory? I think at this point it's muscle memory of. I think it's reminders. Whatever it is, your, whatever your game plan is, right? So oh. if you're South Carolina, let's say you're South Carolina and you're, and you're talking about not wanting to turn it over. I think it's as simple as like, yo guys, you gotta take care of the ball. It's just those little reminders. Cause as games go, to your point about having to think the game, some people can't. Yeah. This is what it is. And you know the teammate who can't. Yes. And so as the there's game goes. There's always one. <laughs> you just got to. <laughs> you got to bring them up to speed. Like back up to speed. There's yeah. always one. You just got to. Hey, remember. Remember, we're sending three to the boards. Yeah. Remember, we're sending three back. There you like, go. Like, whatever it is. Yeah. Just those little reminders. Because to your point, you already know the game. It's, our, it's like it already happening. Let's see what they got. Yeah, they're trying to bring the big up. Oh, Let's high pick and roll. Oh. What do you know? That's a tough defender. I mean, oof. I would have had Reveal on her the whole game. She's been on her a lot. But she I has her been, but they've yeah. run a lot of bodies at her. They yeah. have. Lisa's done a really good job. Like, first quarter is a, a timeout at 19 seconds. Just pulled her up. It's like those yeah. 20 seconds are so valuable. That's what we talked about. You yeah, did. talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that is an important sub. Those yeah. are moments you... And she stole a couple minutes in the third, too, at yeah. a weird time, like at the five-minute mark, which yeah. she usually would never come out. Yeah. At the end of the half, I'm thinking, you got to survive 30 seconds without the oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I mean, Aaliyah getting in foul trouble really hurt her, too. No, I mean, that's just them. debilitating when you're a post player. It just is, or in any position. Like, when you don't play that first half, you're completely out of the game. Yes. And it's hard it's to tough. get back in it. Like, it's tough. They're, they're just not letting her get it. I was not letting Aaliyah Boston get the ball. 14. Look at that. That's exactly what you're talking about. Those girls huddle up and those conversations are flying. I love it. I, I always mean, thought it would be a fun show, like to have, like, let's say Seattle played Phoenix in some epic game and the two of us sit down and the huddle comes up. Yeah. What was happening? Oh. What was being said? Oh, yeah. I always thought that would be such a good show. And then you're on teams when you huddle up and you can't and you wait go. to get out of that huddle. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, mm. <laughs> enough said, right? Just like, get me out of here. <laughs> oh, she missed that chippy. Oh, oh. Yeah. Wow. Do they review? Yeah. They, they right now, like, I want to know, like, what do the legs of Iowa feel like? Every defensive rebound is problematic. On every, every single, single one. one. I know. Ooh, well, Ooh, did I hit her foot? I couldn't see. I, c I don't know the college rules. Is this reviewable for yeah. the officials? It, it is. is. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's on leg. her leg. That's yeah. her leg. Yeah. Good call, is Tiffany Bird. So, Doris, where do you see the WNBA going? Because there's, like, as you said, there's always, like, cycles of, like, style of play. What's, like, the next style of play for the WNBA? What's, that's like, a question for me to ask you. Well, I mean, I like, know I what, it is. It. <laughs> what, is, what <laughs> it is. What is it? Tell me what it is. Well, 
I think it's eradicating certain positions, which is easy to say, like, positionless basketball. Everyone loves saying it, but then everyone has a position, right? right. Even in the NBA, they love saying positionless. Uh, everyone knows who the point guard here in Dallas is. Right. Uh, like, everyone knows who the center is and the shooting guard. But I don't know, you've watched so much basketball now and so much women's basketball. Like, what is the next new thing for the WNBA? I don't know, that's what I'm asking. Okay. I don't know that. But I, you know what I find fascinating is like, what's, how has the coaching changed from the time you guys entered to right now? Or has it? Oh no, it has. It has for me. The needle's moved. Yeah. It's still, I feel like there's still, there's a, so what you're gonna see is players, I mean, not us, specifically us, but players like us who played long careers, not, doesn't have to be a star player, but players who played long careers, they're starting to get into coaching. And they're starting to get experience. And I think in three, four, five years, you're gonna see, I mean, we had Simone Augustus up here. Yeah, yeah. Simone's obviously LSU till she dies. She got up here, looked at the box score for like, it was halftime, literally 30 seconds. And we were like, Moan, what do you think of the game? And the way that she dissected just the game. dissected the game off a box score. She was watching, obviously, but just, you know, the, the way in which they're, you know. Yeah. They need to the yeah, yeah, defense South rebounds Carolina. and get out in transition yeah. because that'll open them up. Whatever she was saying. And it was like immediately both of us were like, oh, well, what are you doing? Yeah, where, when's the job interview? Yeah. Like, when's that? <laughs> the Hopefully minute. somebody's watching. Oh, absolutely. Well, and you see that with, like, so you're Tanisha. Seeing former yeah, like, yeah, Tanisha Tanisha Rice doing amazing, job, amazing in Atlanta. Becky. Yeah, Noel Quinn's in Seattle. It's like, yeah. you're starting to see former players take over, and they're competitive. You know what I love is, like, is how much the NBA players love your game. And the fact that now the rest of the country, because those players love it, talk about it, celebrate the players, the rest of the country's starting to come with them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's like, D, I don't know if you remember this. I'll take half a paycheck one day, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we Celebrate all? that. <laughs> That's, this is the cultural shift we need. And it grinds it's, and it grinds and it grinds. And it's got to wear you two down because you've been at it a long time. And well, I think there's been ups and downs of, like, the confidence I've had in, in women's basketball. Yeah. You know? And it's hard because you're in a setting like this for these kids. I mean, how... How is it going to get any better than this? No. But it should, because you're going to go to a different level with better players, better skill. Like, it should, there should be a, a difference between line, college and two. WBA. And it should be upward mobility, right? That's the no whole doubt. point of life. No doubt. And sometimes there. it doesn't seem like it's been there. And now I think in the last couple of years, you kind of see the upward mobility and where we're going. Big miss free throw right there. And yeah, I, asked, I, I, don't, I did not know the answer to this. I asked somebody sitting next to me. How good a free throw shooting team in South Carolina? Terrible. And that's problematic. You're yeah. down three, you got a minute and a half to play. There's 97 seconds left. Big spot. That's huge. So miss, we've seen a miss chippy. We see a you know a split of two free throws. God, you just after watching this game, I'm like, oh, South Carolina's down 15. I know. That's what makes this game so it's weird. It's a possession. 30 second timeout. Yeah. South Carolina. I'm okay with this timeout. How many timeouts do they have, though? So the one thing, I have, like, gripes with college basketball. I love it. I love it. And then I'm like, There's I hate it. Coming. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many times I watch a game, and it comes down to, we're, it's a minute 37. I've, I'm not saying I have a problem with this timeout. This is just prompting. It'll get to 30 seconds, 20 seconds close game. They've ran out of timeouts. They've used them all. There's, like, no wherewithal that you have to keep your timeouts because at some point you might have to advance it. How about my girl here talking about somebody else coaching? You have no aspirations to coach. I don't know. I, I actually, the truth, I recognize it is a very difficult job. No I really recognize that. And I just don't know if I want my next life to be what my other life was. The travel, the grind, sure. the living and dying with the wins and losses. It's sure. a stressful Maybe I'll life. miss it, it at is. some point. It's a hard life. Yeah, maybe it I'll is. miss it at some point. But right now, yeah. I think the I'm travel, good. the stress. <laughs> the stress, I also think the, like, the, the, travel, travel, <laughs> the stress, the travel, the stress. I mean, you see some of these guys on the sideline, boy. Oh yeah, they age. They need a vacation <laughs> like no other. Wow, she picked up she her dribble. dribble. Another timeout, that hurts. There it is. That's big, Sue. That's this, is come back. this goes to your point about yeah. college Are they players. Are I always had a timeout? Yeah. Hold your dribble, hold your dribble. This is where you wonder if fatigue has kicked in a little bit. I yeah. mean, she's got to carry. <laughs> yeah. 
the whole game, she's had to do it all. And sometimes you pick up your dribble just because you're tired. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, your legs oh, yeah. are Especially like, Especially you've got three Beal guarding you. Yeah. It's just simply because you're tired. She's had a couple of turnovers in the course of the game that felt like fatigue turnovers. Yeah. And they just have run, and Beal is a tremendous defender, long, you know, so, like, lively left to right. But, like, that wears on you, right? Oh, yeah. How, like, your legs right now, you're this kid, your legs are what? I mean, and she's done most of her damage in the paint. Yeah, I know she's, she's to... like, she's, she's finishing at the rim, which. Well, this is where the lack of experience in these moments kicks in. Yeah. When you're tired and you don't have the experience, and then You'll obviously get she gets away. away <laughs> she gets fired off the to D's point. Yeah. I mean, getting to the basket just opens everything up. And yeah. people fall in love with the three, which, you know, obviously it's. But when you can attack the paint, it just puts so much pressure on the defense. And even then, like, South Carolina, you got to be a little bit more vigilant of who's going to the basket. And there's the go-to at the end of games, right? Yeah. Zaya, we've been talking about Zaya Cook all night, how she needs to be the one, because she is the guard. I said the she same the thing, shooter. they can't guard her. I yeah. know. They've not, and why not lift your big at some point and let her attack? Uh-oh. That's the spacing. Uh-oh. Oh, Lord. They call it, oh, she picked up the ball again. Goes to the ball, guys. So that's what I was saying, it's like the lack of experience. When you're older, more experienced, you know what, what tired feels like. Yeah. And you're not, it doesn't, it doesn't overcome you. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is familiar. Yeah. There's I a know great what this clip is. of Coach, uh, Coach Oriyama on being tired, because great players don't get tired. Good players get tired. I like that line. That's true. <laughs> what I would add to that is like, great Does it players matter if train. you're tired of him? <laughs> Does that count? It well, certainly that's counts. Given. That's a given. We love you, Coach. <laughs> All right, this is this is Caitlin's crowning moment right here. If you're wasting clock, I would let oh, somebody Lord. else handle the foul. Foul zone number 12 from South Carolina. Yikes. Three Beals, second personal, 13. Hawkeye's ball. Wow, 35 ticks, and they just got foul number three. Interesting. Oh, you were talking about that earlier. Yeah. This has been a hell of a game. And this is what you hope for, right? Because this is gonna this this helps elevate the women. Oh, I mean, oh Give it back no. To Caitlin. Oh no. Oh no. Good. All right, everyone get That's out of the way. That's where I like Iowa. That that right there, smart. Oh. Oh wow. Oh, oh, look at that. Wow. You've got a foul one now. This place is going wild oh, so right is. now. They had trouble rebounding all night, and they go get it. Unbelievable. Well, when you're chasing shooters, yeah, you're not. You're just not standing there waiting for the rebound. You're chasing. Yeah. You're closing out. I mean, I was creating just the havoc for these for these teams. They just are not used to guarding this type of action no. or that many shooters, right? Just saw the oh, ball. Lord. The, no timeouts though. The foul call. Oh man. She's gonna have to take that, I don't know, Epsom salt bath tonight or something. <laughs> she looks tired. Can she make two? And if she does, guys, you foul in here. Clark to the line. Shooting you know, I've been, I've seen a lot of the early Iowa? foul. If you're Iowa, do you yeah. foul the early I like foul? That. But I like that a lot. Do you foul? They're such bad three-point shooters. That's what I was gonna say. Do you foul? And how? What, where are we bonus-wise? They're done. Oh, oh yeah, they're both in the bonus. Okay. Yeah. All right. I like the super early I love foul. That foul. But I don't like waiting. Just foul. Yeah. You don't like waiting. I, I hate when they wait to. Thirty seconds. When it's that threshold of someone sh just foul at half court. Yeah. No so doubt. Gonna, but, what, so what's gonna two happen seconds. is, like, what's gonna happen is South Carolina's gonna advance it. And they're, I would put my life on. They're going to run something that has them throwing some sort of lob to so one score, of their bigs. Play the foul game? Yeah. No, I'm saying South Carolina's going to throw some kind of lob. So three? if you're Iowa, no, I don't. Oh. So if you're Iowa and you're telling them to foul, that's where it comes down to how much have you worked on this? Right. How much do you trust your players? Right. Where if Aaliyah Boston catches a lob, yeah. you know not to foul and not to give up a three-point play. This is when I give it to Cook, everyone get out of the way, you get to the basket and score. Oh, you, you think? Lob it, which I don't know, I'm just, I've watched South Carolina a bunch. And they do a lot of times lobster. they do that at the end of the game. I haven't watched any game, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we shall see what they do. 
Yeah, we'll see. Maybe you're right. I kept asking, you know, Rebecca, Holly, everybody all day, did Iowa have a shot? And I said no. I said yes. A lot of people said no. I said no. Oh, I thought yes, if they scored. They, yeah, they thought they had to a, make a certain number. Oh, three, three, no. three point play. Oh, okay. I heard a whistle, sorry. <laughs> Oh man, this is where that delay really works in your favor. 30 seconds, timeout, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> Wait, Iowa did have a timeout. Well, okay. Yeah, they do. The, yeah. Now they have one left. Wow. Yeah, the delay's killing me a little bit. They to be honest the with you. Screen. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and don't that, listen to the noise. <laughs> Doris, you're, you're used to watching yeah, the game. We don't do that around here. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is our this living is room. Make it up. So yeah, we're making it up. Room here. <laughs> listen, what you guys pulled off, that's hard TV. What you did is yeah. hard TV. Yeah. Two games, both halftime. I know. You're both going to need a cocktail post game. Uh, I, I don't care how much we've been consuming to this yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Iowa with a chance to go to the finals. Unbelievable. I mean, the rating's going to be off the, oh, chart. off the chart. And if this, if they complete this Monday, it may break records. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think Caitlin Clark has an opportunity ahead of her. Yeah. Unlike any we've seen in women's basketball. Oh, my God. Call a foul. Who's that? JC? Foul's on number 12 from South it's a girl. Carolina. Huh? Yes. What a story. Wow. What a story this Incredible is. Story. Gotta make free throws again. She's gonna knock down two more before straight. And for this is what you do if you're Diana Taurasi or Sue Bird. Just knock them in. Just knock them in. It's just a free throw. Knock them in. You know, but South Carolina, they struggled all night. They, they just, from the beginning, they couldn't they find a They scored more than I thought they would. 73 is a lot. It is a lot. Man, I love to see this. Like, and now she's going for 40. And she has 40. Incredible. I mean, wow. back to back 49. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's incredible. I mean, I haven't seen this since Jimmer Fredette. Cheryl Swoops. Cheryl. Jimmer Fredette. Jimmer, good old Jimmer. <laughs> and it's, I mean, you watch him NBA all the time. Everyone knows she wants to get four, and she's still and getting she's still it. She gets just it. like ridiculous. Their whole game plan had to have been revolving around Caitlin Clark. No doubt and about she it. She still has 40. And they had the depth the and size. the players yeah. to do it. And still the kids scoring and making every right pass. And how, so how good is she in a WNBA uniform? If she, I don't think she can. I think she got to come back. But when she gets there, is it immediate? Oh, I think it's the media impact. Immediate. I think she's doing yeah. stuff that we haven't seen in a while. Like, and, and Sue and I talk about all the time, there hasn't been, you know, in the last, I don't know, four or five years, there hasn't been a game changer. There's been a lot of Since, good players. Well, like yeah. Stewie, Asia. There, yeah, there hasn't been like... I don't want to forget anybody, but those two are game changers. And even like a guard that's just come guard, in and just yeah. lit the league up. It's taken these, like, you know, Plum a couple years, Sabrina a couple years. Arike. Like, Arike. Oh. I mean... Oh, Lord. Wow. Wow. You guys know this. You lived it. I don't like that timeout. Uh, we got to go? No, 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 no. As hard as it is, right? Like, look at this kid. You know how hard this is. Dawn's got how many wins straight? There's pressure to that. You live it every day. Sustaining that greatness is hard. It's tough. It's hard. So we talked about earlier, in our my senior year, undefeated, D sophomore year, arguably the best team ever, um, the one game that gave us trouble was Virginia Tech, at Virginia Tech. And I think it's safe to say, even though it was just a regular season Big East game, we felt the weight of, <gasps> there goes our undefeated season. Yeah. And even though I don't remember ever talking about an undefeated season, yeah, I don't remember, that was never the goal. Yeah. But I think we all knew in that huddle, like, oh, crap. Yeah. Like, here goes the undefeated season. Right. So I can only imagine in yeah. the semifinals oh, yeah. no what doubt. that feels like. It feels like a huge upset. And then you look down, and I was a two seed. You know, oh, so, like, right. if, if, yeah, it feels like a huge upset, but just a really good team. They were 11-point underdogs. Am I allowed to yeah, talk gambling yeah, here? Yeah, oh, yeah. Course. We love FanDuel. We love, yeah. 11-point <laughs> underdogs. Like, yeah. 
pretty good bet if you made it. I would have made it. I just had a feeling. Watch them. I, I got to see them up, up close in Seattle, and there yeah, was just something was, about uh, the way they go played. Go ahead, take a look. Oh, no. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> That's big. That's a huge win. That's a happy alumni now. That's a huge win, and I mean, South Carolina, what a run they've had.